Hi, I'm Alana Vellucci, and this is a quick 10 minutes or less demo of what we've built so far for GitLab Incident Management. So I am going to start with GitLab Alerts. Um, if you are in the monitor section on the left-hand nav, you can see there are alerts, incidents, on-call schedules, escalation policies, and we are here um, on a specific alert. So there will be an alert list. I've got, went ahead and clicked on one of those um, specifically that I wanted to highlight. You can see that um, the alert came in and we've mapped that to specific key fields to help users better quickly triage and um, figure out what's going on with those alert alerts. Um, they can also do that more in aggregate in the alert list um, to, to, again, triage those alerts. Um, not all alerts are necessarily incidents because not everything um, needs to be paid attention to. Some of them can just be resolved and whoever is on call or looking at those alerts can um, move on. In the settings to set up alerts, users have the option to either do connect with their Prometheus or do just a generic HTTP endpoint. If they decide to go with the HTTP endpoint, um, this is just a simple, um, a simple webhook and they can choose whatever their payload is and then either try and automatically parse those key value pairs or they can make a selection um, themselves depending on how they want things to be mapped directly in GitLab. Sometimes users will promote an alert to an incident and that is what this we are seeing right here. We also do have um, that incident list. So um, users can see the incidents, um, users can see the incidents all at once as opposed to just one specifically. Uh, it's important to note that issue incidents also show up on the issue list because incidents are just a type of issue. So if you're looking for something maybe that hasn't been built yet um, on the incident list, like a, an aggregate of all the labels, um, that might be a use case for going over to the issue list. Um, but this is something that we are building out to make sure that it is useful for, um, I believe it's Priyanka and Allison are two different personas. So going back and looking at um, looking at this incident, we are building out things specific to, um, to incidents. Um, so we have, we just released this linked resources, being able to add um, a specific link that is relative or relative and important to the incident itself and being able to see those very quickly as opposed to shifting through um, sifting through different um, comments or the description and trying to figure out where the Zoom room is, what the Slack channel is, things like that. Um, we also just introduced the incident timeline. So um, I think I actually have it up over here. So being able to add the different events that happened specifically and are important from that incident for as a single source of truth of how things progressed and what was resolved and what happened. So this is again, that incident list. Um, so what happens if someone is on call? Let's go ahead and take a look at on-call schedules. So you can have multiple on-call schedules. So right now I have three different ones set up, one for site reliability engineers, one for leadership. Um, and then it looks like someone has come in here and added one for um, the incident manager. So, and then within that, there can be multiple rotations. So let's say you had like a weekend rotation or you had a weekday rotation, or um, you wanted multiple people to be on call for different types of roles at the same time. Um, here is the model for adding different types of rotations. You can see there's a lot of different options in here for how long um, the rotation will last, when it starts. Um, sometimes maybe there wants to be an end date because it's only for a specific period of time over the holidays. Um, so again, you can have multiple on-call schedules and um, multiple rotations, but why would you want that? So. Um, 
on-call schedules are called by escalation policies. And this is essentially if then logic to escalate um, an alert if it hasn't been resolved. So I have, um, I'm pulling the different, um, the different on-call schedules based on when I want whoever is on call to be paid. I think it's also important to note here that we can, um, we can add specific users. So let's say you want to, you want the CEO to know if there's something that's happening in the middle of the night and no one's picking up, um, they can get alerted. But what happens right now when someone that's on call that gets alerted, if there's an alert coming in, um, is they just get an, an email letting them know that um, something is going on and they can click and view the alert details. We do have plans to increase um, the options for having more fidelity around paging, but um, that is on our long-term roadmap. So um, then to kind of tie everything back together, we have um, we have escalation policies that can be selected on the incident if that if that incident is created manually and um, didn't go through didn't go through a formalized alert process. So alerts tie to incidents, which also tie to on call schedules and escalation policies, but they can also be things can also be standalone um, as well. So right now our infrastructure team and reliability team are using GitLab incidents and um, haven't really tied in other parts of the product. We have other people that are using um, on-call schedules, but um, hopefully this gives you a good overview of what we've built thus far for incident management. Let us know and um, give us your feedback when you have a chance. Thanks.